What's up, everyone? How you guys doing tonight? We got a great one on Independent Riders. We're going to be talking about old school, new school, all that good stuff. But before we do, I got an awesome interview that we're going to conduct right here. She is a young one, just got into riding in 2019. It's Killa Kume. What's up? What's up? How are you doing? Correction, 2017, not 2019. Oh, 2017. See, I already screwed it up, man. That ain't cool of me. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of motorcycle do you have? Talk about your uh, YouTube channel real quick, uh, your Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, right now, I'm starting over because my bike was stolen in September this year. So now I have a Nightster, 2010 Nightster. Um, and I started YouTube not too long ago, to be honest. I think it was like last summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you had that happen to you with a, a bike and stolen. I hate that. They're worse than horse thieves in my eyes. Uh, but walk us through how you were feeling. What happened? What did they steal? So basically I was taking my son to school and I had, a, it was parked in like a universal garage. So, but my car is blocking off the bike and I had it locked and everything. And usually it's a safer place, but I guess not recently. So um, <laughs> next thing you know, I seen these guys, they parked over on my neighbor's parking spot. And then I was like, Hmm, who are these guys? And then like, they were looking at me. Some other guy was walking out, looking at me. I was like, I think they're looking at my bike. And then like, Three hours later, I go back down and then my bike was gone and stolen. And oh, I mean, man. I was like not freaking out, but I was like, oh, man, it's them. I knew like I knew it, you know, you yeah. should have got the license plates. What they were, uh, what were they driving a van or a truck? It was like a blue. I think it was a blue Chev, not a Chevy. I can't remember the car, the model uh -huh. of the car, but it's a blue car, like a Royal Navy blue car. So right. Very easy and they drive. found it in uh, Hollister, you said. Yeah, they found it in Hollister. This, I got a call just a couple weeks ago about how mm. they found it from the cops. So. Oh, well, that's good. At least they uh, caught them or they didn't, caught they didn't catch the suspect. They just caught they just found the bike. So yeah. it wasn't the best introduction to uh, the riding world with getting your bike stolen. That sucks. Well, <laughs> The bike that I actually loves. So I started on a Honda Rebel 300, the 2017 one. And that was a good bike to learn on. And then my dream bike was to go get a Harley. And so when I finally got the Harley, I was really out there like riding all the time and then just always out riding every weekend. And then it got stolen. I was, my, I was like so crushed. It was like so sad. I was crying for I think a whole week straight, like really sad. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, and then I was like, I don't know what to do. I put so much money into that bike, and it was like it was everything. And then, um, yeah. So, but I mean, Thank now God that I have insurance. Oh, I know. So I got paid out and got a new bike fast. I was like, I'm not. I'm not waiting. <laughs> I'm getting in my other bike. What did you end up getting? Uh, 2010 Nightster. Awesome. Well, Look at yeah. you go. Yeah, going from Most three to twelve hundred. So. Most girls your age go uh, for the sports bike. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Why didn't you go with the sports bike? Why did you decide on Harley? So Harley's, I don't know. They always give me that, like, that, I don't know. It's just like a liberating feeling when you feel like the rumble, like when it turns on. And I don't know. It's just, and it's fucking badass. So <laughs> that's uh -huh. why I like them. And I was inspired when I was a kid living across this house with, um, they always had a whole bunch of Harleys and bikers, and I just loved it. And that's what brought me into like um, that's what brought you motorcycles in general. Like I was never into sports bikes or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where did you did you take a motorcycle riding course or yeah did you do it on your own? How did you yeah. do it? So funny story. I I was going through like a rough time at the time, and like I always had so much anxiety and just like so much. So. Um, I took a one-on-one -on -one course um, somewhere in San Jose. It was just um, one instructor and me. And so I would learn and I would shake like it, like I was jerking the bike and I would fall and it was, it was, it was so bad. And then the instructor actually had to pull me aside and be like, uh, let me talk to you. Um, is this really something you want to do? And I was like, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, this is something I want to do. Like, why can't I get better? You know, but then like, I was just like, so determined. I was like, I'm going to keep going, keep going. And then um, when I got the test, uh, I went to the DMV. And so over there, they didn't have like that. Um, it's like that full group test where you can just take the instructor test and the written test. But mm -hmm. this one was DMV test and written because the other guy, he doesn't work with the other company or something. Right. Yeah. So I went and then I almost made it, uh, but I went out of the line at the very end of the test. And I was like, fuck. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then next thing you know, I had to go two other times. Each time I freaking failed or the bike stalled on me and I dropped the bike and fell in front of everyone. And I was like, you know what? I think I need to take another group course. So I took the group course and just passed there because the test is easy. You're not going slow on like, you know, uh -huh. and stuff. But yeah. your writing skills have gotten a lot better over the past oh, four years, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> so, so much better. It was just starting off trying to like be confident in yourself. Like it's more of like a mind game than it is like actually muscle memory to me anyways. It was always mm. in my head. So, and that's mm. how it got better. And you yeah. recently started a YouTube channel. What's the channel about? So the channel is just basically just like my adventures with riding, just going out to like events on like nice places to go. And I'm like just trying to be more um, into the riding community because mm -hmm. I don't have. Well, actually, I started off with barely anyone to ride with. Yeah, anyone. So and, and now you got a group that you're riding with. Yeah. So I actually I ride with the Switchblade sisters. Um, they used to be the leaders. I'm not sure if you've heard of them, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I ride with them, and I ride with a couple of my friends. And is it a, a motorcycle club, a riding club? I don't know how to explain it. It's not like a motorcycle club. It's just like this group, mm -hmm. of, like a riding group that we just do events with, and you know, get together and hang out. Kind of like a, a social club kind of deal, then. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Awesome yeah. stuff. I'm going to bring in uh, the rest of the panel right now, and they're going to ask you some questions and, uh, you know, have a good old time right here. Let's bring them in uh, right now. We have our independent writers, and our special guest is Kilakume on this segment. And then we have uh, the process uh, in here as well. Uh, we're going to go around the table and let you guys ask uh Kume, uh, some questions. Graystar, you're up first. Uh, being that you're a Bay Area girl, I would like to know how is it riding in the wintertime out there? It's great. I love it. <laughs> I I hate riding in the summer more than I do in the winter. But then again, I was learning how to ride in the winter. So I'm like very used to like the cold in California, I guess. But like, so I'm like, every time it's like that time, I'm like, yeah, I can actually wear a leather jacket. I don't have to wear a mesh jacket. <laughs> Yeah, and I always try to gear up as much as I can. Right on. What are you talking yeah. about cold? Come to Northern Illinois, <laughs> see what cold is. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Pennsylvania. Dark Soul, you're up with the question for uh, Kume. Uh, you mentioned riding gear. What gear are you wearing? Um, I wear riding pants with like the knee pads, um, sometimes Kevlar or that stuff where prevents like um what is that road rash so road rash. Yeah. yeah you don't want that trust me yeah that's why i had to get some of those and protect myself as much as i can um i have i actually have a lot of stuff i have like mesh jackets i have leather jackets i have like a shirt armor shirt you know just everything so so you you're riding around like a tank yeah <laughs> that's what it sounds like <laughs> but I, I wear it and I try to make it like super stylish as I can, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. So I got this cool armored shirt, so I wear it underneath like a sweater, and you can't even tell I have gear on. It's a California <laughs> thing; you gotta yeah. look for it. It's yeah. a Cali thing. <laughs> how about you, Process? What do you got for uh, Kume? I was just gonna ask her how it feels to be cooler than ninety-eight percent of the guys she's hanging around with. Heck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> do they all want to ride? No, not all of them, to be honest. So the boys don't jump on as fast as the girls do then, huh? No, not really. <laughs> That's a nice bike you got. Thank you. 
I love it. J man. Uh, you ride with a bunch of sports bike riders. Do you uh, carve the canyons on that nightster? Oh my gosh. Honestly, I'm so slow in the twisties. I'm going to be real with you. I'm so damn slow in the twisties. Like, because I'm like nervous. It comes with time. It comes with time. <laughs> with time, you'll get it down. Yeah, some of them, some of them just fly. I was riding with um, my girl once through, what is it called? Um, it was up at Alice's, and she was just flying on a grom. And I'm like, how the, I don't want, I'm like, I'm staying back here. Y'all just, oh, so. <laughs> she was dusting you on a grom, huh? Yeah, she was. I was like, damn, I wish I can go that fast, but You're no. going to have to work on that. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I will. I don't ride enough <laughs> twisties, to be honest with you, now that I think about it. I'm just more like highway. What is the, what's the scariest situation that you try to avoid being in? This actually happened <clears throat> last week, last weekend. Um, some car was like, swer uh, not swerving, he was changing lanes to the left. And then he went back into the lane, like where I was. And then I was like, what the hell? So I... I couldn't break in time, so I had to swerve to the right, like where the, my escape path was. But it was very close; like I could have rear-ended somebody. So, yeah, that was like nerve-wracking. That I think that was the scariest time. I had another incident when I was first learning how to ride. Um, I was fixating on like this ramp, and then you know there's the exit, and then basically I kept looking over there instead of looking at the exit turning, mm -hmm. and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I stopped right there. But luckily, there was no cars. I was like, oh, no shit. No cars. Yeah. Well, it is awesome seeing the ladies getting on the motorcycles oh, yeah. uh, nowadays. And that's one of the main subjects that we're going to be uh, talking about today. And it's great to have uh, Kume on because she might be able to give her opinions on this the process as well. Process, uh, talk about your channel real quick. Um, It's just a motor vlog that's kind of centered around... Uh, recovery and mental health you Rock know i kind of i kind of do a bunch of stuff for mental health and uh i'm you know using the motorcycle to you know treat my other addictions that's <laughs> awesome to hear man mental health is something else let me tell you i know what it feels like with panic and anxiety you got that yeah. really my uh therapist has two wheels rock on. <laughs> oh yeah Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. So the main uh, subject today is, and guys, make sure uh, uh, Kume is going to be putting her channel up once in a while in uh, the community chat. Go over there and subscribe as well as uh, the process. You go by Jesse, right? That's my give, that's my given name. Yeah, I go by the combustion process on uh, YouTube. Rock on. Uh, we got to change it to like Hank Williams Jr. or something. You look just <laughs> like him. Anyway. <laughs> the main uh, subject today is old school versus new school and it's very interesting to have kume on here today and the reason being as you older uh, guys know it's come a long way for women compared to our era where we looked at women who were riding bikes as kind of a novelty as we would have the oh let's you know what what are you doing on a bike you know we have that type of attitude uh dark souls start out with uh down those lines of thoughts well i'm gonna give you a little in hollywood you gotta go back on the history a little bit there was women riding back then not very few but there were some there are some legends out there that have put the miles on you know you can't mm -hmm. leave them out they, they have done that uh it's great to see a lot more getting on twos you know and to me it's a it's a change in evolution you know it's been a long time coming i mean isn't gloria is that her name gloria she's still right gloria yeah, yeah from, uh, motor, maids. motor maids yeah motor yeah. maids is something else uh jay man i was talking in the general sense of how us hardcores, how us greasies, you know, non rubs, if you whatever you will, looked upon <laughs> back then. How, how is it different back then compared to today with the general attitude? Well, in the eighties, when I started riding, uh, there there wasn't uh, as many wives, uh, girlfriends riding. Uh, my first wife never rode, 
my second wife here, she loves her bike. Um, I can't pry her off of it sometimes, you know? So I think women riding is a very good thing uh, due to the fact you're not too up and there's less chance of both of you dying in, a, in an accident. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. Well, that's one thing that happens now with me and my wife is I'm more careful than I used to be with her on the back. I'm more aware that I have somebody else's life. Cause you know, when we're all younger and stuff, we uh, ride like idiots and stuff. But as you get Look older, you kind of get more wise and you were right. Cause I was up in Florida. Right. Well, when you have kids and you got grandkids, it changes the whole dynamic, of everything where you want to be a lot more careful and I think that was some of the thinking back then was, hey, if I went down, that's fine. But you don't want the wife or girlfriend to go with you. Uh, process, your thoughts. Oh, I think it's sexy. I think it's great. More women riders, better. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I get a little nervous when I watch my lady friends that are riding their bikes. You know, they tear out around and you see Tiffany and her beige battering ram coming across on a cell phone with a latte. I get a little bit nervous when she's riding because, you know, I'm like, oh, man, if she was behind me, I know exactly what I would do. But, uh, <laughs> the, you know, that kind of that makes it kind of nerve wracking in that way. But I think it's great. I think more women need to ride. And uh, I've been outridden by several ladies. Rock try on. To, try to catch up to them and they just tear off and all I see is the tail end and they're yeah, gone. Them go hard. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great star. Well, being an independent rider, as we all are here, um, I've met quite a few lady riders. And I got to say, it's really interesting to hear them talk about wind therapy. The process of talking about his therapist is two wheels. It's that way for the women as well. And I think it's awesome. Not to mention the fact that, hell, they even do clubs. There's women clubs out now. So, mm -hmm. How were you looked upon, uh, Kume, when you first started riding, say, from an older guy's perspective? They thought I was cool. Most of them thought I was cool. I mean, when I was, I went to go pick up my Honda Rebel in Gilroy, um, it was with my coworker and her husband, and I was like, hey, can your husband pick up my bike for me? And then she was like, no, you're going to go get the bike and you're going to ride it back home. And I was like, I don't know if I can do it. And so basically I got picked up on the back of his bike and then went to um, pick up my bike. And then he was like, that's, that's a pretty cool bike. Like, you know, and he just helping me. And I feel like a lot of the older, I guess the older men, they would like really help me with stuff. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Is what where did the evolution dark so come from? Because I've learned in the last year or so it's time to come into the 21st century. I think it was back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. so I stepped away from the scene for a little while due to family issues and stuff, the race family. Uh, but I kept tabs, you know, through other means. You know, I had friends and stuff that were, you know, call and say, hey, you need to get back on twos and stuff. But yeah, uh, it's my wind therapy. It's my go-to when I need to clear my head and, you know, mm -hmm. restructure and stuff. But the, you know, sorry, everyone, I do have a little cold going coming on to me. So I'm in the process <laughs> of trying to get the third all cleared out. But yeah, well, they, I'll go to uh, J Man on that. When did you said you started in the '80s? We know how it was back then. It was get on to the back of the bike and, you know, everything that went with it. Uh, I believe it had to be early 2000s myself when women really started jumping on the bikes. And I have to admit, some of these women can outride us men, man. They can go coast for coast and they're still all giddy. <laughs> where we're hunched over and all that stuff uh what about you what what's your thoughts on where it started changing for the scene as a whole well i went to first time i ever went to daytona bike week was 1997 and i didn't really see a lot of women riders uh i went back in 2000 uh there was a more 2001 uh i went back uh it was about the same 2007 there was more lady riders down there than 
clubs. Uh, you know what I mean? I did not see a lot of clubs, but I saw a lot of lady riders. Mm -hmm. And right. so it was about 2001, I would say. What do you think Grey Star women had to overcome to be where they're at today within the scene? Us old, fat, chauvinistic pigs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously. Speak for yourself. <laughs> very straight I'm, up. Very straight I'm, up. I'm, I'm not one. I never have been one, but they're out there. And I think the stigma of a woman in a kitchen has stuck around for a long time. And it's really... It's really uplifting to actually see women saying, fuck you, I'm going to ride. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I agree. To, to Carlos's uh, deal, uh, yeah, women have been riding since the early 1920s, but I would have to argue as soon as, say, the 60s rolled around all the way up to the point of the early 2000s, it was a different type of scene yeah. that it was back then. How I, how I see it is that uh, these brands of motorcycle companies saw a vast market that they wanted to jump in on. And so they were like, hey, there's 50% of the market right there. If we just put some pink wings on the side of the jacket, we're going to capitalize. And so late 80s, early 90s, when they did that big change with all these motorcycle companies, they were like, let's hit that market hard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everything started coming out to, uh, aimed towards the lady riders and the new riders. So I think the corporate shift had a lot to do with it, too. Do Good you point. feel, Kume, that what he was talking about, uh, say Harley, for example, you know, you had past experiences with them and why you wanted to ride one. But do you believe their advertising is starting to go towards women more than the man? I guess now that I think of it, I think they, they're trying to get their trying to hold on to like their identity and like trying to shift it towards the younger crowds. So not maybe not exactly just women. I think it's just towards the younger crowd so they can keep the name like living. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that's one thing Harley's been having a problem with is the younger generation. Why do you think your fellow uh, writers that are younger don't like Harley? Do they think of them as an old man's bike? That's why they're on the rockets. I feel like they always say so. A lot of people I mentioned that I actually had like a conversation with a coworker because I saw he rides too, but he was riding sports bikes. And then he was just like, Oh, why are you riding a Harley? That's like old man shit. And I'm just like, I like it. So, so I feel like it's just that whole stereotype of Harley, and they think that's for. That's uh, some of the now that old stereotype actually comes from our time period. Is it where sports bike is considered a new rebellion, like Harley's were to us? That's interesting. What do you think, uh, Jay, man? I, w I wouldn't say so. Um, I was going to say uh, about the women riders in the 60s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, men wanted their women to stay at home and not ride. Because they were taking care of kids. They were doing homework. You know, nowadays, it's not like that. So women can ride right alongside of us. It's a they different society outlook now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a whole different outlook now than it was in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. So, so that thing about women been riding since the 20s, yeah, but not a lot. Not a lot. But anyway. Motor yeah, Maid. Yeah, Motor Maids is an awesome women's organization. It's been around forever. And I think it really, for the younger ladies, really made a big difference uh, with them in the scene and showing people, hey, women can ride. Uh, Dark Soul. I'm Go sorry. ahead. Jim. Motorcycle classes, uh, Hollywood, is another thing that brought more women to riding because yeah. back in the seventies and eighties, do you re really remember motorcycle classes where they train you how to ride? Nope. I never took one. No, no they put you on a bike yeah. and said, ride or crash. Have fun. 
There that's about how it worked with us back then. Uh, yeah, I never took one. Dark so, uh Hearing how we've changed so much, where do you think, if you're going to call it the sport of riding or the, uh, the lifestyle, the scene, where do you think it's going to go? Are we going to ever get a 50-50 mix with women riders? It looks like it's leading towards that way if uh, some of the younger generation get interested in it. Right now, your mm. demographic is still, you know, between your middle age to your middle age group and stuff. So, if uh, mm. I mean, you got Harley Davidson did try with the Buell to get into the sports scene for a little while to try and bring some of the younger ones in. And some of the bikes are building now. You got to look at India, you know, the Indian Scout is leaning towards, you know, the new Sportster S that came out, it kind of being more of a leaning towards that younger generation and so. So, mm -hmm. I it, it eventually would come around eventually, but we got to fight off this freaking electric shit that's about to come through that oh they're my. pushing and <laughs> down our drinking throats right now. Uh, you, just, uh, shook, you just shook your head, uh, Kume. What do you think about the electric uh, craze coming? Oh, I don't like it because. It's just it's just not the same. And mm -hmm. on a Harley, I would like to see how that's gonna be. So mm -hmm. that doesn't have you sense. ever uh taken a ride on the live wire yet? No, I haven't. I haven't that, that's like uh, off limits right there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> not not my type of bike. <laughs> right. I mean, I'll try it, but, mm -hmm. but other than that. No, Gray star, a lot more women are starting to wrench now. Yeah, I think that has alleviated a lot of the way we look at somebody. Agreed. Um, hell, I wish my wife would wrench, <laughs> 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 so I don't yeah. have to. <laughs> no, but Mine put her on the front end. yeah, there's a lot of YouTubers out there, female YouTubers out there, wrenching and showing us men how it's done. It's kind of mm -hmm. cool. How do you think process the scene is changing? Is it better compared to the 80s and 90s because of technology? What is pushing the change in the attitude? Oh. Yeah, it's definitely different. The generation is completely different. Everybody gets a medal. Yeah. You know, it's changed completely. You know, I, I'm I'm in a luxury um where I'm out in, the, in a bubble. So we live out in the country. I'm 20 years behind the times. So these younger guys and all this stuff, the V-Rod riders, the live wire riders, they're like, oh, you're just 20 years behind the times. You, you mean when things were fun? Right. So, so mm -hmm. there is a humongous change between what looks cool. Like you guys were saying, all the new guys are getting these uh, crotch rockets. You know, I just, I see it's kind of the, I don't want to cuss or anything, but I think it's pushed down the whole, everything has mm -hmm. been watered down and safety scissors and safety corners. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a totally different, you know, when I, when I came out from my, my parents are both writers th through the eighties, there was just stuff that wouldn't be put up with, with what the kids are doing nowadays. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a completely different world. And I hope, through guys like you guys talking to the younger people that they start turning the ship around, uh, you know, they need to turn the ship around because it, it is fluffy. It, it's way, way too fluffy. Nobody takes their bike on the dirt. Nobody. I don't know. I don't know, man. Tough question. Do you, do you agree, Dark? So uh, I'm to that, but the pussification or thing. I mean, just go back to that TikTok video I made about the cold start. Man, there's so many guys. Oh, that bike should be in the garage, and, and uh, dude, then I'd be in the elements. Come on, man, it's a freaking machine. Get on it and freaking ride it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> you know? Fuck. I mean, a little bit of snow and dust and stuff. I mean, you're not gonna have it in the elements. Why did the hell did you buy it for? I don't I mean, want to ship my paint. <laughs> yeah, you want to sit there and just look pretty, I and mean, you just wasted thirty, twenty, thirty thousand dollars for nothing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, that's one thing that kind of pisses me off a good bit. I'll go on the showroom floor of these Harleys, and they'll be like three, four, four, four or five years old, and only have like 10,000 miles on them. 
Man, it's that I like two, that the next two like years that. old, and I got like 28,000 miles on the sucker. That's freaking, mm -hmm. it's, I'm leaving on a trip on the 6th to go down to Louisiana, from Pennsylvania down to Louisiana. I'm going to be mm -hmm. on my twos. It's just, the pussification is out there. It's no offense to you, know, me, but just, it's, it's just bad. It, well, Kume, really have you noticed that you said you always had bikers around you? Do you feel like from what you knew compared to actually getting into to the lifestyle is a lot different than what you've seen before? So how was, people acted, how they rode, the whole nine yards. So I actually don't really, I'm not very knowledgeable because when I was younger, I've seen bikers and stuff, but I wasn't always around bikers like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, not until recently, I believe. Like, yeah, when mm -hmm. I got into it, then I started meeting more bikers because everyone around me was either into bars or something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great star. So these bikers that you've met now, um, give us a feel for how they are. I guess it depends on who you're riding with. So there's always different. I ride with different groups. I've, I've ridden with like stunners, um, ridden with uh, some of some friends from clubs and stuff too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everyone's super chill. I don't see anyone thinking, well, especially like with me as anything else. They just they just really want to have right, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How have you there? been? Uh, go, have go you ahead. ever been to a major rally? Yes, I have. I actually think I posted a few rallies. So I went to, I think I went to two Hells Angels events. Um, trying to remember what else I've been to. But those are like the major ones that I actually have on the channel. So, mm -hmm. and I mean, they're cool. I mean, I know I don't feel any way when I walk in there. I know I look different from everyone when I walk in, but like, yeah, most of the time, um, I don't You're feel treated very well. Yeah, treated very well, like with respect. Of course you will. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's what I was kind of getting at. The bikers, that's how we roll. We treat women with respect until respect is not deserved. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, if we need more of that, just like the process was saying, this world is going to shit and I think it's up to us bikers to try to get the young folks to turn it around. What do you think about the video I put out yesterday, Jay, man, where my biggest problem was people don't know how to hold to their word anymore. They don't believe in it like we used to. Well, it's uh, with the Internet. Uh, it's it's kind of weird for me to say Hollywood because I know people say one thing and then you talk to them in person and they're saying a totally different thing. So it kind of drives you crazy, but you've got to deal with what you got to deal with. And you take people or who they are until they do you wrong. And when they do you wrong, that's when you take care of it. Mm -hmm. Where is that uh, process? Where is that gone where you hold uh, people accountable? Well, you got to, I mean, your word and your balls are what you got. You don't break them for anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you, of course, if you're going to get called out on something, you're going to learn a lesson real fast. And people just don't want to be around you. They'll just isolate you if you're known as, you know, blowing hot air. They're just going to just not be around you. You find yourself isolated real fast. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt uh, disappointed in uh, something, uh, Dark Soul, where a fellow biker would say, Hey, you know, let's go do this or do that, and it end up not happening. Hey, sometimes it does, but I don't let it get to me. You know, it's just like Jay, man. I said I was going to stop at his place on the way to the Rumble. I don't my mm -hmm. about it. I went freaking three hundred something miles out of the way just to go see him first, and then came up to the Rumble. You know, that's something that's been another thing is lost. These kids today. They, a lot of them don't have respect for the elders. That's, I mean, you mm -hmm. walk down the school and stuff, and you like, like who the fuck you are? It's kind of like the attitude they got now, mm -hmm. and like gimme gimme type attitude. But there's some of them still got their heads on the swivel. So, I'm praying, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like he said, I hope we can get the ship turned around. By the way, guys, don't forget to go to Kume's uh, YouTube channel and Process's YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully, if any of my moderators are in there, they can put their channels up for us. The combustion process. Oh, it was a pain in the butt. I should have thought more. I you mean, I'm not into this technology game, man. I should have never picked that name. What a stupid idea. No one can hey, find it. Jesse, I was looking for you, and I typed in the process, and a bunch of different processes came up, but not you. <laughs> Yeah, How's that yeah. you, uh, feel, Kume, when you hear some stuff like that? Have you ever run into uh, people that would tell you one thing and did another? Or how do you feel about hearing the older guys talk about something like this? Um, give me an example. like Where giving your word back in our day meant that's gold. You would have a handshake agreement. You wouldn't have to worry about if somebody was going to hold up their end of the deal. Uh, loyalty, for example, loyalty was really big uh, with us and the honor. It don't. It seems like it's lost on the generation now. Well, that's crazy because I feel like with everyone I've met and stuff, and they always say something, but they never keep their word. And I, I'm like so used to, oh, well, I can't trust them, you know, so right. like very few I can trust. And even then I'm like, oh, should I even trust you? Because, you know, that's what I was saying, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. You you take somebody at their word until they break that word. And then then it's, you know, on yeah. from there. It's just words at that point. Right. Do you find that uh, to be more of a problem uh, with your generation than the older guys? I think so. I mean, yeah, because there's just, I've noticed a lot of, um, I guess, things in my life. So it's just like, everyone's always gone back. I've been backstabbed. I've seen other people backstab people. So I'm just like, who do, who do you even trust? You know? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, right. And that's a sad state of affairs because the motorcycle gray star bonds us all. And with that came, the understanding that you were more honorable than a regular civilian was agreed totally agree it's even more so in the club, in the club. i was just going to say it's even more so in in a club situation but us as independent yeah. riders um still our word is our bond and that's really all we have and, and that's something uh, as men, uh, club or not, that was always known. Yeah. Not so much anymore. Mm -mm. Not so much anymore. And that's, that's, uh, that's a sad state of affairs. Go ahead, process. It's just common courtesy. I mean, this is just base values. Being respectful to the ladies, being respectful to the older folks, or even t having patience and time with the younger folks. That's just common knowledge. That's where it's gone. That's do the, the young, do that's the young the men device. even open a door for a lady anymore? No. Not unless it's the bedroom door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I some sometimes they open the door. Wait, well, actually the car door, I'm not sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dark, so what happened to when a fellow motorcyclist broke down on the road that everybody would just stop what they were doing to see if they were all right. That don't happen anymore. Not, Not a really. lot. Not a lot. Same thing with the 18 wheeler scene, you know, trucking scene. Uh, it's, it, it's kind of, it's kind of similar. I mean, I've been driving truck for 27 years, oh, 27 years. That seems like a fucking long time, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to retire. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, yeah, you, I, you used to have like four or five people break down. I, I thought it was gone, but uh, we were up on uh, 322 one day uh, this past summer, and one of the guys, you know, stalled out. And it was come to find out it was an electrical issue, but uh, two people uh, stopped over and go you know, say, hey, you need any help and stuff. And they, they sat there until we was back on our bikes, back on the road. So there's still some out there. It's just very far and few between. 
But, I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll be yeah. driving to right. see so if we're okay. Right. I'll pull over. Yeah, I was going to say, great. Graystar, where we live, it's life or death. If you don't pull over to help somebody, they could die. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it, we're a long ways between spots out here in the mountains. And so yeah. when you when you see someone, you do help. You're in the crash truck 24-7. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gume, what do you think about that? Uh, do you ever worry about breaking down and nobody stopping to help? I don't think it would be much of a problem for you than it would us. Because I'm a woman. <laughs> Because you're a woman, let's just be honest. I mean, yeah. I mean, most of the time I've been helped out and I'm very blessed, you know, and so I want to redirect that to everyone else around me. And I remember a time I actually stopped because I saw someone broke down. Um, he was like in the bushes on the highway. And so I saw him, but I kept going and I was like, okay, I'm going to go back around. So I l- went back around to get to the freeway just to stop by and say, hey, are you okay? And then he was like, oh, I'm good. I'm just waiting for someone or the tow truck. And I was like, Okay. Good on you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what's that's what us bikers are supposed to do. Right. Yes. Right. Well, we See, were yeah, supposed to look out for each other. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We were See, supposed yeah, to look out for each other. You know, Go ahead, Dark So. I say if you see the helmet behind the bike on the ground, stop. Help him out. Mm. Right. Yep. What do you think, uh, Jay, man, that the kids now need to learn that we knew automatically? Uh, don't mess with the police, <laughs> you know, because they will mess with you. Um, that's the most important thing because you see uh, most of the kids today, they want to split lanes and uh, um, cut people off and, and ride their wheelies on the, on the highway at 150 miles an hour. And I mean, there's a place to do that. And that's not the place to do that. I'm sorry. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, speaking of electric bikes earlier, um, zero to 60 in 2.2 seconds, I think is worth uh, uh, an electric bike. And that's what the new ones are going to be coming out with in 2022. So be Mm -hmm. prepared. Be prepared. Who who just rides 60 miles an hour? (laughs) Process, what do you think uh, they could learn? Um, a lot of stuff. Like we were talking about respect, that they'd learn that. I get the thing with the officers because they all want to have an argument like it's their parents talking to them. Uh, I think here's the big thing I think they could learn, how to listen, how to really truly listen. If, if somebody comes to you like your show or one of the elders comes to you and takes time to sit down and talk to you, take time to listen. Yeah, man. Keep your mouth shut and learn something because you don't know how long they're going to be around the wherever the garage or whatever to listen and get that information, get that education and uh, figure out, you know, what the past was like to so we don't repeat some of the stuff that we do, you know, Mm. some listening, I guess, listening. Dark. So. I pretty much touched on a very good bit of it. You know, sorry. Mm. Just uh, listen. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I <laughs> took my shot at Jack Daniels earlier to try to clear it up, but ain't doing it. Another one, brother. <laughs> I, I, I'm you, about uh, to go back down there and have a conversation with Jack, and I'm like, I think you get out, Mr. Jim and Mr. Bean, and then follow up behind it. Dang. Well, let's start out with Kumi for this next one: motorcycles. Do you plan on upgrading from where you're at eventually? <laughs> eventually. So I want to do, I want to use my current bike as like a project bike because I wanted to paint it and just, just keep building on it and make it what I want. Um, but in the future, I do want to ride a bagger. I don't know. I'm like, that's crazy, but I do. How much can you bench? <laughs> <laughs> you, pick up a bike, you just gotta pick it up the right way there is a lot of women uh of your stature that does ride uh baggers so that's an awesome goal what do you think they then would be a good bagger for harley honda what do you think would be a good one to start out with i'm diehard harley so <laughs> harley. <laughs> if she's already on a harley why not stay harley yeah. Well, until she gets that learning curve of a bigger bike and, you know, That's some coming from a guy from a victory who rides a victory. He's calling out the Harley. Come on. 
<laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with victory, baby. Here we go. When you twist the throttle, they all go straight. So yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, any any one you want doesn't matter. Right. Rock on. Are you more into the technology uh, process, or are you more bones? Uh, bones. I don't like anything with the brain. Mm -hmm. I really don't like anything that's way too complicated or, you know, if it, uh, let's just say if a solar flare hit your bike, could you still start it? You know <laughs> what I mean? Because all this technology and stuff that I can't reach in and fiddle with and play with, I mean, if it breaks, I can't fix it. I'm not a robot. Right. So I definitely like more mechanical stuff, just old fashioned mechanical stuff. Dark. So you have a badass bike, <laughs> badass one. Tell why did you choose that one? The paint scheme and got me. Kind of, <laughs> <and what kind of. laughs> uh, my my neighbor growing up across the street had uh, always the uh, the bagger. And I, he he took me out a ride with him. Of course, my uncle had dark dirt bikes, so I said eventually one day I was going to have me a nice bike, and I worked toward it. it took a long time, but I got the bike mm. that I wanted, and then I'm taking care of it, and it's going to last me a while. But yeah, the paint mm. scheme got my eyes on it. It just popped at me, and, and of course the guy there at the Harley days to go, oh, that's you right there, and I said, yeah, let's go for it and see what happens. So, but. It, it it just it's a like all the bells and whistles on it. Uh, I barely use the heated grips or the heated seat, you know, because I layer up so much. And right now, I barely feel that damn heat coming through that whatever it is, you know. Mm. So, but yeah, as far as the radio goes, it's nice to have the radio sometimes. But I have it down where I'm still listening to my motor. But right. Yeah, but I agree with process. It's that old tech, yeah, you know, the old school stuff. There's a lot of like the bobbers, the knuckleheads, the panheads. Well, I, th I think that's a big uh, talking about indie riders and new school and old school. Like old school, wasn't it like, uh, you know, pizza cutter front wheels, real slim down. You take everything no off. Brakes. that doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no brakes. It doesn't make it like uh, faster if you remove anything shiny. Mm -hmm. And then now, <laughs> nowadays with the with the new guys, with the new guys, that it's all the slid down baggers, big wheels. I mean. It's a trend. The new guys, they're riding these bagged out baggers. I don't know. I couldn't do what I do on my motorcycle if I had all that luggage. Yeah. It, yeah it's nice point. to have, but I'm not going to be able to get around the cows, the trees, the fence posts, and the uh, cars, uh, you know? So I keep it slim. These baggers are a new trend that the new generation are falling into, and they just love it. Kume financing, is that a barrier for individuals your age to get on a harley is it easier for sport bike financing do you believe how was the finance experience for you um i think you can get a sports bike pretty easily with just a couple racks um on my harley i pulled out six i think six thousand and i mean yeah i mean like the sports are just like my stepping to get my foot in the door of harley Mm -hmm. um, yeah and i didn't want to spend any more and like for just for a new bike because i had um for the new bikes like they're like i think they're like fifteen thousand for like a street bob now um mm -hmm. that's a lot for me to pull out for a bike so yeah so financing would be a problem for gray star for somebody that's younger i think it would be unless you know they're out of college making you know, a hundred grand a year, whatever. But um, that's why I am starting to save up now so I can upgrade my victory to another victory and have it mm -hmm. paid for. Right. <laughs> J-Man. Do they got to get uh, better with the financing in order for the younger kids to get on a Harley? No, I don't think so because uh, uh, Harley is going after anybody and everybody they can get. And financing is financing. If your credit rate is good enough and mine is not, I can't get a new bike. But I'm sure if uh, your credit rating is good, you can. So mm -hmm. process. I don't think 
Well, uh, my thing is like this. You guys had uh, a lot of the stuff I'm talking about, you guys have touched over for the last few years. So I want to give pr uh, credit to what I'm about to say, being coming from somebody I heard through you guys. There are so many amazing Harley Davidson motorcycles available that are pre owned, barely used, uh, yard gnome trophies rubbed with a diaper, sitting in the garage of all these people's house. You can go out. And you can talk to somebody with a little scratch in your hand and you can come back with the bad sled. And yeah, it's nice to say you got the brand new shiny. It smells nice coming out of the box. But in reality, go get one that's in your range reality wise. Don't get into their financing trip. That's yeah. just a prison. Try to do yeah. what you can without them. And then, you know what? Strip the paint off of it and then uh, spray paint some Molly Hatchet on the side, please. There you go. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> a disaster, baby. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, you live for the good old days, let me tell you. For those young ones that uh, didn't live through our time period, I feel for you. We knew how to party, I can tell you that. Amen. Dark So everybody's always talking about how they need to bring down the price of Harley. Do you think it's the pricing, or do you think it's priced right? It's too much technology. Uh, it's too much technology, and that's why the price is so damn high. Uh, they cannot bring the price down until prices of computer chips and and navigation and all that crap come down. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm with process on it. I ride a 94 electric glide and there's no nothing. <laughs> you know, it's got a radio. That's it. So, right. But yeah. I, yeah, I agree with Jay, man. It, it, it's, yeah, I think monkey did a good job of a deal. He, you know, took his street glide and he wanted to add everything that's on there based on what the CVO has. And it came out to the same price of buying a brand spanking CVO. And he's mm -hmm. like, you know, he went out and bought one, you know, to justify the cost. Because he sat there and, you know, the radio, you know, the front end and stuff. He went down the whole list and it came out with labor and all. It was like 23.7. So wow. to convert his bike up to what it was. So it, I think it me, <laughs> the bikes are overpriced. Really, I mean, mm -hmm. I got a good deal on mine. I mean, everyone thinks it's forty two thousand for it. I actually got it ten thousand less. The reason being is because a guy bought it, didn't take delivery, but because it was already titled, they consider already the second owner, and I basically got a good deal on it with only twelve right. miles on it. So it, it's out there if you look for it. Yeah, you know? but yeah, that One that was my subject. Yeah, right. One last go around on the table. Uh, we're all bitching about technology, but there has to be something that you really like. Kume, you're first. What do you have do to have? have I do have a question. Kume, uh, what that? camera are you running? For Sorry, your, what? Uh, for your, what cameras are you running for your motoblog? Oh, um, GoPro Hero 9. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, Kume, uh, what's something you have to have on you when you're on that bike? Um, Something that I always have to have on me is I carry my knife with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, technology-wise. Oh, technology. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, Technology-wise. I like her. She's carrying a knife on Hell her. Hell, yeah. <laughs> 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 she could have stabbed somebody in the throat. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I guess like technology that's actually on the bike. I, for one, I always like, like, does pipes count as technology or no? <laughs> <laughs> you like the pipes, huh? No, I'm talking about, uh, are you a GPS or are you one that no. just like riding and going on uh no. I just ride and go. I mean, I have my phone and I use that as GPS. There's not much technology I want on the bike. And I don't even have it. I started off with nothing, any technology on my bikes anyway. So. Oh, not that's anything. awesome. Yeah. Uh, China is asking if Kume can put her channel uh, right there in the community tab. Everybody wants to go to your channel. <laughs> you better put it in there. You're losing here. Uh, she got a good channel. Yeah, yeah she does. Uh, Gray Star, what's something that you have to have with you? Well, it depends on uh, the length of the trip. Like if I'm going 100 miles or more, I need my earbuds in. 
need some tunes. Got to listen to some Iron Maiden while I'm cruising. Rock on. J-Man. Uh, I'm, again, not a big tech guy, so as long as I have my tools with me, I'm fine. <laughs> Process. I don't carry anything. No radio, no heaters, <laughs> no nothing. No headphones. No, that defeats the purpose for me. I got to listen to the world. I have to hear that rumble in order to stay straight. Right on. Thanks, Greg, for uh, subbing to our channel. Don't forget to sub the processes channel, too. If you can uh, find it. Dark Soul. Thank you. <laughs> I'm half and half, man. I, I got all that technology on my bike, and I just use the Bluetooth 90% of the time. You know, listen to, you know, like Iron Maiden, you know, Megadeth and shit uh, like that. But it, like I said, I keep it low to where I'm still listening to what the world's doing. Uh, you got to keep well, your head on thing, the swivel. Uh, like that. One thing, Dark Soul, we didn't bring up. I don't think who may ever know the feeling of having to break down and walk about five miles to the nearest payphone to get a tow truck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. That sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you using your using your glove thumb. to carry water? And yeah. You got gum to get those five miles. <laughs> yeah. Packing water in your glove. Do you know what a payphone is, Kumi? <laughs> yes, I do, actually. <laughs> they still have some somewhere, right? <laughs> and just think, we had to do it not on the bikes <clears throat> that you have now. We had the old iron heads, the old, sh the old shovel heads. The, uh, my first bike was a 77 Trine Bonnie. Uh, when those suckers broke down, they broke down. And you were uh, running to the nearest uh, pay phone at that time. I wish I had a cell phone back then. Pay phones. Don't forget about the you know, pay phones. Remember the old uh, pay uh, prepaid cards to you know for long distance the penny cards. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> we actually didn't get uh, all included in our uh, phone plans back then. <laughs> it was pay. Uh, I'll uh, tell you what, man. I've been caught in some storms and some cold weather before. Where I wish I had the heated seats and the heated grips and all that technology shit. Mm -hmm. But Rockin'. I don't have it, so I don't really miss it. You know what I mean? Hey, I got one more. I got one more thing before we sign off here. I just want to bring this up real quick. It's been on my mind. Um, my old man and my mom and everybody, they're, they're clubbers. I was raised in this world between the uh, old, old and the new, new. But my, my thing is like, you know, I'd watch my old man wrenching in the garage, you know, eating a, uh, eating a sandwich with grease on it, more grease oh, on the yeah. sandwich, yeah. you know, and uh, he would look over at me and he'd say, Hey, Jess, Go go to school and uh, get a job. Don't be don't be a motorcyclist. Don't don't. Uh, yeah, go to school. Look at my back. I'm lugging the lumber. I'm working my ball. You know, I got my hands are beat. My arms are beat. Go go get an education. You know, and so now I'm like being educated, being retired, and out of the field of work now at this young of an age. I'm going. You know, he was right. I had to take a lot of time off for riding the motorcycle. But that's that's another thing. How do we justify saying the new kids are kind of like, you know, not they're not really into it? Well, these guys are going to get major degrees and play with some major money, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up. It's been on my mind. It, you know, it's called the, it's called the lifestyle for a reason. Uh, that I can tell you, that'd be a good topic uh, right there for the next. Uh, independent writers, if you want to go over on that. Uh, special guest coming up on the show. Uh, I think it's the seventh is the Biker Dad. Uh, Biker Dad's uh, always on our program. He's awesome. We love him to death. But I do want to say uh, thanks to uh, Kilakume. You guys are awesome. Make sure you go see her channel, damn it. And uh, we'll put it in Discord and the process. Uh, it is hard to find his fucking channel, but uh, hopefully, no, uh, he can put it in the in it. <laughs> there's like a million different things that come up when you put his shit in there. Hey, hey, Hollywood, you would have your phone number process? Yeah. Okay, I'll get it from him. I'll hit you up. Yeah, call me anytime, day or night, 24 All hours. Right. Or... 
I got to What do you got to, to close off with, Kume? Go ahead and uh, give your final thoughts on everything. Um, thank you for hosting, and um, it was a pleasure to meet you guys virtually and have this topic because it was a really good topic for me too. So, awesome. We really appreciate uh, you uh, being on the show, you two process. It's awesome. And as again, with uh, our independent writers, you rock and roll. Uh, it's a great subject, the old against the new. And hopefully us older guys can teach the younger ones some of the stuff we know. I know our generation, my generation sucked at uh, teaching the newer ones. It's unlike the Vietnam vets. Uh, how they taught us, but with people like uh, Kilakume and uh, the process, the, we might have a good uh, future right there, that I could tell you. But uh, join us uh, again next Saturday at 7 uh, p.m. Central Standard Time. This episode will rerun over on Roku, and we are now on Fire TV uh, so head on over there as well as all our other platforms. And please go to uh, The Process and Kilakume's uh, channel. Subscribe. They got awesome content over there. But until then, you guys have uh, fun. Go out there, party. The whole nine yards. We're out of here. Add the Insane Throttle TV app on Roco now. Get content not seen on our other platforms. No censorship, no PC. Only biker fun and entertainment. It's hardcore. Again, go over to Roco TV and add the insane throttle TV.